This picture makes me a little sad, but only because my half Monty's, my preps, my cadaver half Monty's that look just like this, they're gone. And if I want another one, I'll have to make it. I don't know if that one's going to happen. We'll see about that. Hmm, that could be an interesting prep to do. This is a halfway inside look at the male reproductive system. And I'm having pen issues, which means that I'm not going to write out every anatomical structure and label it for you. I'm actually going to try to draw lines to the structure so you know what I'm talking about, but then I'm going to use my words to say it. That means that you're probably going to want to pause me while you write down what I just said. It's not normal. Usually I try to uh, actually have this for you, but uh, it is what it is. Look at this bladder. This bladder is really big. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a little intrigued and inspired by the bladder versus uterus phenomenon, but let's talk about male reproductive anatomy, shall we? What is that? That's the testy. That's the uh, gonad that you get. Your bipotential gonad turns into a testy if you have a Y chromosome. So I forgot to tell you about a fantastic structure that I thought only the fellas possessed, but apparently the ladies have it too, and I'm so grateful because it was the one thing in life where I was actually jealous of those Y chromosomes. For the most part, I'm pretty stoked to have two X's. Fellas and ladies, attached to our bipotential gonads are these, like, connective tissue ligaments that over time shrink and move our bipotential gonads through our body. The ladies, they move from, you know, belly button height on down lower to lower than belly button height. The fellas, this structure moves the testes completely out of the body. Are you kidding? Thankfully, they have a little sac that they sit inside. That would be the scrotum. Here's the scrotum, that thing. It's the skin part that the testes sit inside. But I forgot to tell you what the name of that thing is. It's this little ligament. Quit it. Quit it. It's like right there. Uh-huh. It is called a gubernaculum. Really? How awesome is that word? Don't you want to, like, call somebody a gubernaculum? Dude, quit being a gubernaculum. The gubernaculum draws the testes down and out of the body. The gubernaculum moves our ovaries around, ladies, but, and it becomes, like, part of the round ligament in the uterus, but, again, it doesn't move our ovaries out of our body. So. Here's our testes. Um, this is the penis. We're going to spend an entire section talking about the penis because if you look at it, aren't you kind of like, whoa, that's more than I thought it was going to be. Like, it's just like a thing sticking off. No, there's some detail to that. Um, this structure right here sitting on top of my testy, that's called the epididymis. Push pause. Get all that down. Then you have a duct a tube, a tube that runs, remember our testes is producing sperm, that runs up. It's called the ductus deferens. And so go look it up. It's all right there. You can just find this picture and just label it. Uh, this, okay, so check it out. Here's my, this ductus deferens comes up here. Now it's interesting because the ductus deferens, meets up with a gland, and this is the seminal vesicles. And the seminal vesicles dump stuff into the tube. Here was the ductus deferens. Here the tube is passing through a gland called the prostate gland. Look at that thing. It's 
nice round prostate gland. When the structure, this tube, passes through the prostate gland, it gets a new name. Now it is a urethra. And it's not just the urethra because the fellas have three urethras, three names for different parts, three different parts of their urethra. Here the urethra is called the, I can say it, a prostatic urethra because it's passing through the prostate gland. Here, I don't know if you can see this, this structure right here is the urogenital diaphragm. And when the urethra passes through, look, I'm putting dots there, passes through the urogenital diaphragm, it becomes the membranous urethra. And then once it enters into our famous penis, it's called the penile urethra. So we have three different urethras that we speak about. What else? Did I tell you everything? I told you this was the bladder. So who's this? Kidney review. That's my ureter. Ureter. Der. You know what? I made it sound like the um, vas deferens turns into the urethra, but it doesn't. It feeds into the urethra. But here's the prostatic urethra that empties into the bladder. That's better. So bladder empties into prostatic urethra. The vas deferens also dumps its sperm into the urethra, and the seminal vesicles also dump stuff in. Did you follow that? I hope so. Okay, that looks like a good overview of our gross anatomy, so gross, of the male reproductive system. Now let's get crazy. Now we're going to figure out how we're making our sperm.